We're going to talk about the color wheel for a few minutes. Um, the color wheel is how colors relate to each other. Man has come up with a way to put colors in a circle and show how they relate or how they play with each other. And that has helped artists and designers and it's used in hair coloring, it's used with makeup. You'd be surprised at how you can take color theory and when you understand your colors, you can understand more about how colors work together, play together, or don't work together. And we're gonna learn a little bit about that now. Color wheels are usually set up differently. Um, this one was made where it would be red, yellow, blue, um, and stay consistent with that. So I flipped mine a little bit, see? <laughs> but you can keep yours how you want. I wanted to teach it the same way so that you can identify it in the videos and in the slides and then with how we're going to teach it with paint and other art supplies. So some color wheels put black in the middle and that means that as the, the wheel, the color is showing, it would be the darkest in the middle and it would go out to the lightest form. And you will see that that happens um, in some color wheels and some choose to put white in the middle. So it'd be the lightest forms in the middle of the color wheel and then it would go out to the darkest. So this is a color wheel from Target from the $3 section. And this one is a Melissa and Doug um, color wheel. So you can see how colors relate to one another in this one. I'm gonna turn this just a little bit so that it stays in line with this one. So this would be red in the Melissa and Doug, and this is red from the Target, and then yellow and blue, so red, yellow, blue. Those are our main primary colors. Primary means that red, yellow, and blue are primary colors that God has given us, and there's nothing you can mix, not a single thing in this world that you can mix that is going to make red. It is primary. It is a gift. There's nothing that you can do to make yellow, nothing. And there is nothing you can mix to make blue. That's why these are primary colors. So red, yellow, blue. Now, what we can do with these colors, this would be the most simple form of a color wheel. You're gonna see just like that. Red, yellow, blue. Now what we can do with these colors is when we mix them, we create new colors. And new colors are going to be either secondary or tertiary colors, or we can even make neutrals. And how this works, if we were going to create a simple color wheel with paint, we would have red, yellow, blue. And once we mix this color with this color, these two are beside each other, and this color with this color, because they're beside each other, and this one with this one, we get a second color, and that goes in between. So let me show you what I mean. So if we take a little bit of this yellow, we stick it here, and a little bit of this red, and we mix these together, this is a very strong red. I get just a little bit more of that yellow. So when we mix a little bit of yellow with a little bit of red, we're gonna get a new color, a second color, and it's going to be orange. And the more yellow we mix with it, or the more red, will change the tone or level of this orange. See, now we have orange. Now we can do this all the way around the color wheel. We can take some more of this yellow. And a little bit of that blue. And we're gonna get a secondary color or a second color, which is green. And then when we mix blue and red, we're gonna get a second color with blue and red. So we'll take a little bit of this blue and a little bit of that red. And we're gonna get a second color, 
are a secondary color of purple. Now, red, yellow, blue is primary. Orange, green, purple, secondary. And then the more red you mix or the more yellow you mix is going to give you what is known as tertiary colors. Let me show you what I mean. So if we take this red and we take a little bit of yellow, we're gonna get our orange again. But if I add more red to it, I get a red orange. And if I add more yellow to it, let's make our orange again. But the more yellow I add to it, I get a yellow orange. So a red orange and a yellow orange. And that works all the way around. So I'm gonna take a little bit of that yellow and a little bit of blue. And I will get a more yellow green. And doing the same thing over here with more blue. I'm gonna get a more blue green going towards that teal tone. Magentas. This is almost endless. The more of one color you add, you keep going. But this is known as red, yellow, blue, primary, orange, green, purple, secondary. And then from there, you get your red oranges, your yellow orange, your yellow green, your blue green, blue purple, red purple become tertiary colors or your third color. One thing that kids and adults sometimes will do is mix a, they will mix, I'm gonna put it over here, a primary with a secondary, which is basically adding all your primary colors together. And every time you do this, you are going to get some form of brown. <laughs> Anytime you mix colors together that are opposite of one another, you're going to make brown. So let me show you what I mean. So if I take red and I mix it with green, let's make green, yellow and blue make green, Red and green are across from each other on a color wheel. That means they're complementary colors. Red is not in the color green. Therefore, they are complementary colors. They are opposite each other on the color wheel. Blue was not involved in the making of orange, only red and yellow. So orange and blue are complementary colors. Yellow was nowhere near making purple. We used red and blue. We did not use yellow. Purple and yellow are across from each other on the color wheel. Therefore, that makes them complementary colors. Now, the complementary colors, when you use them together, like we have here, red and green, red and green, they are always going to make brown. Some kind of brown. A red brown, a green brown, a yellow brown, but they will always be brown. And that works the same way with any of the opposite colors or complementary colors. If you mix them together, you will always make brown. So if you mix red and blue, I mean red and yellow together, that's perfectly fine. If you mix yellow and blue together, perfectly fine. Purple, blue, and red together, that is absolutely acceptable. You will always get some shade of purple. You will always get some shade of orange and some shade of green. But if you go across from each other on a color wheel, you will always get brown. Some kind of brown, but it will be brown. So when you're doing your artwork, be conscious of the colors that you're using when you're painting with them. Because if 
yellow touches purple, it will be brown. If red touches green, brown. If blue touches orange or gets mixed in it, it'll turn brown. Now, where that is the exception to the rule, if you have a yellow that is too bright, let's turn my paper this way. If I have a yellow that is too bright, let's say you go to the store and you want to have a beautiful shade of yellow mane. Let me make a little bit of purple here. Okay, you go to the store and you have a wonderful shade of yellow made and then when you get home, it is too bright. If you take the slightest amount of purple and mix it into your yellow, it will tone yellow down. If you go too, if you mix too much, it's gonna go brown. If you have a purple that is too bright for your bedroom, if you mix a little bit of yellow with it, and I mean a little bit, it will gray it down just enough and take that sharp, sharp, um, bright tone off of it. It still will be yellow, but just a lighter shade of it. Now I've added too much purple there, and now I'm getting more towards the brown. But this is how you can make a color less bright if you know the opposite color on the color wheel how you can make brown, if you know the complementary color on the color wheel, and how these relate. Now, warm colors are known as the kind that remind you of fire. So that's gonna be your yellows, oranges, and reds. And cool tones are the ones that are more of like calm waters and meadows and just these cool tones of purple, blue, and green. So that is another way of looking at your color wheel, whether they are the warm, or the cool. And this is a messy color wheel because when you play with paint, it gets messy. But you can make your own color wheel with construction paper. You can make a color wheel with construction paper. You can make a color wheel with items from around your home. You can make a color wheel with paint, with yarn. How can you make a color wheel with items around your home? And also, don't be afraid to play with your paint and test out your colors and see what happens. On your color wheel, if you mix your colors together and they're too dark, you can lighten them up with a little bit of white. And if they're too light, sometimes you can add a little bit of black to darken a color. Or you can mix a little bit more of your primary color. Now, a fun thing that we like to do is make color wheels out of yarn, paper, construction paper, or maybe items that you have found around your home. Can you find some of your favorite toys and make a color wheel? Can you find beads? Maybe items from outside? What can you use to make a color wheel? Ways to make a color wheel is with food coloring because you can eat it. <laughs> and who doesn't wanna eat a color wheel? So all you're gonna need is, is of some of your favorite icing, white icing, and then you're going to use not that green. You're going to use red, yellow, and blue. And you're going to take different dollops of your icing and make your red, yellow, and blue, and then mix. And you can stir it with a pretzel stick and eat your color wheel after you have played with your color. And that is fun too. Have fun making a color wheel and let us know what was your favorite way to make your own color wheel from your home.